Hi everyone. In this session we're going to be having a look at some animation principles and some of the basic tools as well as tips and tricks that you may or may not know about that can help you refine and tweak your animation just that little bit quicker. The first thing about animation is that you can work with it in two modes. You can work with it with auto key on which animates the channels as you work or auto key off which means if you were to animate a channel you would have to manually set keyframes or delete keyframes through the right hand menu. I'm going to use auto key just to give you an idea of how this works. So for example let's do a very basic animation on the flame icon. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the flame icon off on the left and then towards the end of the composition we'll just move it over to the right hand side. This has now automatically created a keyframe animation. One thing worth knowing at this point is if I was to turn auto key off and try and adjust the X channel where I've just placed a keyframed animation even though I can change the value at a specific frame that value actually gets ignored because a curve already exists. Just ensure that auto key is always turned on otherwise any adjustments or refinements you make will be ignored. This is common behavior in the software and the channel is there and it cannot be overwritten without auto key being turned on. If you didn't want keyframes in the channel you would have to go through to your animation channels and manually remove the keyframes you don't want and keep the keyframes that you do. The second thing is that even though I'm not even looking at a channel editor I can very clearly see in my sliders where animation exists. So if you ever look at the position X slider you will notice that there is a yellow highlight underneath the value. This is telling me that A there's animation in that channel and B that I'm parked on a keyframe. If I scrub the time bar to the middle of the composition the highlight goes blue. The blue indicates that I'm on an animated channel but I'm not on a keyframe. So this is how you can very quickly identify keyframes whether it's on the actual slider or on the time bar itself where you can see the little blue highlights telling me where keyframes actually exist. The other type of highlight you can get is when you have an expression on a channel and that is in the form of a dotted line. Now if I needed to create any types of animations in the sliders without having to go to an animation editor what you can do is you can simply hover over any one of the channels that you want to adjust. Now one of the new tools they introduced into the software recently was the contextual menus. To access them to the right of the spacebar you will find a button that looks like a pop-up window. So if I was to hold this button down and click on the value this will then bring up the contextual menus. So if I go through these we can do a whole variety of things depending on what type of animation you've applied to that channel. So for example let's say I want to copy the channel and I would like to apply an expression to the Y channel based on the value of X. So for example if I call up the pop-up channel once again I can choose to paste the channel which will just make a duplicate of that animation or link the channel and that will write an expression. So you can see there's the highlight that I mentioned the dotted line and now the X and Y channel are linked mathematically. If I made a change to the X channel you can see that it will dynamically update the Y channel. These expressions can be edited later on in the channel editor but it's just giving you an idea of how this works. Now if I wanted to reset a channel in the sliders once again without having to go to the channel editor I can simply call up the contextual menu and just tell the system to reset it back to the default value and now I've got my animation that I have once again. So here I have a similar animation but this time I've got the added benefit of having a rotation added into the movement. I've got animations on two different channels. I want to go ahead and find the curve of the X position channel. I can go through the animation editor and search for the channel by expanding out the hierarchy till I get to what I need or alternatively an even quicker way is if I hold down the shift hotkey and double click on the X channel. This will automatically bring up my curve which I can then begin to edit. Now as you can see I can have either have the large view of the curve editor and make changes here or what we could do is simply just switch over to the reduced view which is the normal view of seeing the channel editor and having my animation up top. Once I'm inside here we can then begin to refine it. Firstly 
In the channel editor, you have three ways of looking at your animation. The first way is the channels, which we'll come back to, but the second type of view is the tracks view. Very similar to other applications where you can actually adjust the durations of your animation as well as change the timings as well when they actually occur. You can also go ahead and select the keyframes inside here and move the keyframes around. You can select one keyframe or multiple keyframes. It's very simple and very quick to use. The third way of looking at animation is something known as the info. The info palette basically tells me the keyframes inside the particular channel and the value that I'm at at the current channel. This is very useful to getting exact figures of what is happening inside the animation itself as well as it's a good way to see and add expressions inside and see how expressions are affecting which channels. Once again, very useful tool and this is something uh, we hope to cover possibly in another session. Now let's just go back to the channel animation. So here I've got my animation and the animation happens over 20 frames. In this case, you've got the few basic operations which I'm sure you've already discovered. You've got your move, so you can basically just pick up a keyframe and move it around. You've also got your add button and delete. So this is the pop-up menu with a whole bunch of different tools. So move, add, delete are the most simple tools which are very easy to use. Now you have a whole other range of tools which can help you work even quicker. The first tool we're going to have a look at is the select tool. Now the select tool simply allows me just to create selections of keyframes. Now I don't know if you've noticed but in the move tool you can also create selections and keyframes. The difference is, is if you are being very accurate with selecting keyframes and you don't want to disturb the curve, which is basically what the move tool will do, the select button only allows you to select keyframes, but then it does not allow you to move them, even if you were to grab them. So this is very, very handy. I can be very accurate and make sure that I don't accidentally slip a keyframe when picking it with the move cursor. The second thing is the break function. Now what the break function does is it takes a symmetrical curve like this for example and it will break it up into a tangent. So if I switch back to move mode I can now adjust that tangent and you can see how I can create a corner curve based on what I've done. Now coming back to that break tool you can use the break tool to basically smooth the curve back out again. So just by clicking on the keyframe it turns it back into a symmetrical curve which then allows me to adjust it again. Let me just bring that uh, curve back to its broken state, which is this. Now one of the other little tools which can be quite handy is the next one, which is called Auto. Now what Auto basically will do is it allows you to click on the tangents of a keyframe and it creates a smooth curve. Now what makes this different to the break function is that it does not recombine the curve to make it a symmetrical tangent. It just smooths the curve out. So if you had created an animation and you just wanted to smooth the tangent you may have created, you can do that without having to break the curve again, smooth it, and then if you need to, break the curve one more time. So this can definitely be a big time saver when you are adjusting the way the curve is actually looking. The next function you've got here is pan and zoom. Pretty straightforward stuff. I know I don't need to talk to you guys about that. The function above those two is translate. Now what translate will do is if I had a few keyframes selected and I go to translate, translate will allow me to move the curve around. Once again, something very similar to what you can do with move. The difference is, is when you use move, you can accidentally deselect the keyframes you're moving around. Whereas translate, doesn't matter where I am working in the curve, it will always hold on to those keyframes. So it kind of acts as a lock function on the selection and allows me to move things around to make changes. The last two here that I want to point out are two of my favorites. One we have called the X scale and the other one is called the Y scale. Now what these will basically do is these allow you to scale keyframes. Now it sounds pretty straightforward and I'm sure you might have seen this in other packages but what makes this really nice and handy is depending on where I place the cursor so example for X scale, if I was to X scale from the first keyframe, all the other keyframes will either move away or towards the current keyframe that I'm selecting. If I was to do the same selection from the middle, you'll now see how the outer curve at the beginning 
and the outer curve on the end move either away or towards the X scale. So once again, it's purely dependent on where you actually select your keyframes will determine the actual motion of that curve. Same thing applies with the Y scale. If we were to choose the Y value here and I scale it towards this particular keyframe, you can see how the other curves will move down to match. Or if I change it this one, I can then really tweak it from there. Another useful tool inside the channel editor is the insert key function. What the insert key function will do is it will add keyframes into the existing curve, but it'll also allow you to shift parts of the curve down to make room for that keyframe. What I mean is you would insert in a value at this point. So let's say we want to shift the curve down by five frames. And when I insert the key, you can see that it puts a new key at frame 10 and then the key that was originally at frame 10 has been shifted down to 15 and all the other keyframes in the remainder of the curve have also moved down by that exact value. This is really handy if you've got a constant animation and let's say for example a client tells you to stop the animation at a certain point, let's say here, and then the same animation curve picks up again. I don't have to go through the whole manual process of selecting a lot of keyframes, moving them down, then adding keyframes in, and then trying to refine my animation. Lastly, what can happen is if you're doing lots of animation and you have lots of animation channels available, sometimes selecting keyframes in the channel editor can be a bit cumbersome. So, for example, you can see I've got my X position channel and I've also got that Z rotation channel in the channel editor which I don't want to select. So even if I was in move mode and I held down control and I dragged a box across the keyframes, even though the Z rotation channel is not selected, when I release, you can see that all the channels get selected in the curve. This can very easily be avoided by using a different type of hotkey. So let's say, for example, we were to go over and once again, we just select the X channel. If I was to go ahead and hold down Control F and I drag the marquee across again, when I release the pen, you will notice that even though I've got all these channels exposed, it is only selecting the active channel. Now this works for a single channel, which is what you've seen, or it works for multiple selected channels. Once again, it's all based on selection.